there, the wonderful Nikki Shields. What do we have today for our head-to-head? -head? She's being nice because I gave her a biscuit earlier. Um, you might get another one if you're a good girl. Uh, well, Nick, because I knew you had the Kona, you know, with a bigger battery, I thought I'd bring this along. The Volvo EX30 single motor extended range ultra. Shall we just call it Volvo? <laughs> yes, please, don't ever make me say that again. <laughs> this is interesting, actually, because they're both within a grand of each other. They'll both do around 300 miles, have similar batteries, but after that, they are very different. They are, which is why we're going head to head, and we will be giving you some opinions. Oh, uh, and facts, just in case you're worried. Some factual opinions. But before we do, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to the channel and put those notifications on, we would be forever grateful. Okay, I would like to start for your pleasure with this, the Hyundai Kona Ultimate 65 kilowatt hour. It's just over 43,000 pounds. It will do a lovely 319 miles worth of range. And as you can see, I've got it in gray. So I've got it in like a hippo spec, do you reckon? I reckon. It's a bit hippo-y. A very clean, uh, mud-free hippo. Yeah, I mean, it's shiny. not too big, but it's practical. It's been a very sound choice for the generations i'm talking about generations of cars not generations of people because it's not that old so yeah i like it thanks but i like mine better right because <laughs> you're not going to believe this it's a thousand pounds cheaper come on that yeah but why a small round of applause <laughs> doesn't it um it has a 64 kilowatt hour battery so okay one kilowatt less and um, it does have a range of 295 miles a smidgen less <laughs> but it's cheaper, so it's all making sense. And also, I think, can we just appreciate the exterior looks? It does have that kind of coherent Scandinavian finish to it. And I'm gonna go with this kind of paint finish, reminds me of a stormtrooper. And everyone loves a stormtrooper, right? Okay, so we're going, <laughs> we're going stormtrooper versus hippo, right? Yeah, <laughs> and let's not forget, Thor's hammer LED lights. Throw that one in there for free. Yeah, which actually I do like because Chris Hemsworth is fit, so that's totally fine. There you but go. I do have to say, from the outside <laughs> okay. in, I, d I do think that yours does look nicer. I can't, I can't deny that. And I really like the design of your wheels. Very nice. They're 20 inch, right? They are 20 inch, which means you might lose a little bit of efficiency for complete transparency here. If you do want to maximize efficiency, you might have to get the smaller wheels. Yeah, I'll also like to say these are 19 inch. So you can go for the 17 inch option if you want for better efficiency and then you'll make the most out of your range. But with the ultimate version that I've got here, it's 19 inches, so. Okay, so come on then, what else have you got? I have a full width light bar. Look what she's just drawn attention to though. Yeah, I know. That's really annoying, isn't it? It's so <laughs> annoying. It's like a sort of drunken add-on, like, Whoa, where should I put it? Oh, I went to the right. Yeah, you're right. You're it's absolutely right. Asymmetrical is not, is not good when it yeah. comes to charging. Port. And it's not the most uh, coherent car. <laughs> it's, it's, it's bubbly at the front, jigger jagger down the side, and then a little sort of booty at the back. It's got little kinks to the back, doesn't it? It's yeah. a little bit bumpy and a little bit bobbly. Whereas mine, again, is just a little bit slicker. The downside, I do have to say, is that it is smaller. It's a bit lower, it's a bit wider, it's a bit shorter, it looks a bit like that. Yeah. It so does. <laughs> if you are looking for a big, small car, this one isn't for you. Yeah. I have vehicle to load, whereas you don't have vehicle to load. That's a good point. Yeah. She makes a good point, which means you can make us a cup of tea at the motorway services. I and I'll can. just have to go in and buy us yeah. a cup of tea at the motorway But you've got services. an extra grand, so you can afford the tea. So that's yes. totally fine. Exactly. I'm winning on that. Um, Here's the thing, right? Do you think bra like brand snobbery is still a thing? Like badge snobbery? People thinking that Volvo's more premium than a Hyundai? Do you know what? I think now that there are so many new entrants into the market at the moment, I think there is an unconscious bias that we are moving away from brand snobbery at the moment. Yeah. Unconsciously, we care less about the logo on the front of the car. Yeah, I agree. But look, I mean, it's got the Volvo badge on it, but it is made in China. Yes. <laughs> so my Scandinavian Stormtrooper <laughs> is actually made in China, yeah. as probably most Stormtroopers are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. But interestingly, another point, this is built on its own EV platform, that is not. No, you're right. 
I'll tell you what, should we have a little look inside this? Come with me, join me here. I want you to jump after three. Ready? Right. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, that was clever. Yeah. Um, now I reckon, unlike the inside of an actual hippo, this is still very grey on the inside. I mean, it is very grey. I don't know if you know this, but hippo milk is pink. Fun fact for you. So. I don't know that. I don't know why you know that. I and know I'm why. not sure I wanted to know that. We digress. Welcome to okay. the interior of the Hyundai <laughs> Kona. I'm sure you'll agree the layout of this is really lovely. We've got dual screens here. They're both 12.3 inches and they work really well. Do you know what helps them work? <laughs> buttons. buttons. So many. But don't you think overkill? No. There are buttons everywhere. Here, 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 here. Here. Yes. There are a lot of buttons. I get why there is a need for some buttons. Buttons are great. But a little bit of simplicity. Buttons is, and knobs are so always... much better for safety while driving. I'm just saying. All right. Okay. We'll agree to disagree on that A couple one. of charge ports there. You can do just, I mean, unnecessary text. Clearly, that is a charging port. Why do we need to see this little sort of electricity wire thing? Because it's unnecessary it tech. looks cool you've got wireless charging down there you've got heated seats heated steering that's all included and the 12 volt do i really need i mean it says push no that's unnecessary that is very unnecessary 12 volt 180 watt push really that adds absolutely nothing to my experience i've got head-up display really which nice. i know that you don't get in your volvo i've got a head-up display in here which looks very nice and may i mention the sunroof that doesn't just open like this. It also opens all the way up and then you can get some fresh air and feel all fresh, It'll be just fresh. Firstly, where's the other half? <laughs> it's not bad around me. And secondly, oh, fresh air. And actually the air's coming in, whereas though it, it, it doesn't. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, what else you got then? Um, we have quite lovely storage, little shelf there for your phone things got things on there hang on a minute hang on a minute that's your problem for having an extra large phone <laughs> my so. phone which is i would say is a kind of an average size doesn't fit yeah so there's one place for your phone Why? there yeah and we've got some nice cup holders they are nice i'll give you that and also what's it like in the back it's very roomy back here there's also two usb-c ports a vehicle to load plug and there's heated seats Ooh, that is a good point i don't have that. I mean, the rear space is very decent. It's actually 60 millimetres more in the wheelbase than the old one. So there we go. My boot space, 466 litres from floor to window. It's good, right? And yeah. it's got the hidden floor underneath as well for your charging cables yeah. and your tyre mobility kit. Yeah. Ow, it's heavy. Yeah. So it's not a faff inside there. Very nice and neat, right? And let me show you my frunk. My frunk, which can I just say, is a very decent shape. You can get some good old snacks lined up there. You can put your cables in there if you want to. That's a fairly decent size, that. And I like your net. It's very Thank practical. You. Thank you. Now, mine, however, uh, may be a little bit smaller, but I feel the shape of it is perfect for bottles. Yeah. I reckon I could get a bottle of wine along there and then on top a two litre bottle of Coke. So I'm yeah. going to cater for everyone. Do you also put inside your clutch bag and other stereotypical female things? I line my lipsticks along here. <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> and story time. You want to be sat around the front. We've got a uh, Rudolph it's the Red Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> It's a moose. It's a probably moose. It's yeah, moose. you're probably right on yeah. that one. Okay, it's uh, the moose meets the Volvo in a sort of cloudy environment. Very, very Scandinavian, <laughs> but built in China. How do you think my storytelling is? <laughs> really bad. I feel for your children. <laughs> and the story time continues in the back. Will it fit? Once upon a time, R2-D2 took his golf clubs along to play a quick game at night time with his lamp. He decided to have a party and blew up some helium balloons. He stayed the night and never goes anywhere without his trusty plant. And that is how babies are born. 
Anyway, on to the boots. So this bad boy has a not so whopping 318 litres worth of boot space. That's nearly 50% smaller than the Kona. So if you're looking for lots of space back here, this is not the car for you. You do have a little hidden floor for your charging cables. Here is rather nice bag, I must say. Um, but that is the boot. Oh, don't hate me. Headroom's nice because of the, the panoramic roof. But that's bad, legroom wise. Got a bit of storage down there. What's that? No! Story time continues with the rear seats. I won't continue Nikki's story because I thought they had a marvellous ending. Couple of charge ports there. That's how you do your windows, by the way, here. Which is, which is just ridiculous, isn't it? That doesn't open. That is the end of the rear seats. There is nothing else to tell you apart from the fact that it's small back here. So, good. Up front though, things are slightly different. Don't judge. <laughs> Work with me. Okay. All right? Yeah. I know what you're gonna say. I know what you're gonna say, but just let's go with it. A single screen for everything, everything. This is a 12.3 inch screen. Obviously the first thing you think of Tesla. Yes. That's what they did. They put all their controls in one place. Now, in the defense of Volvo, I know we don't have any buttons here, but what we do have on the menu is that these things always remain there. So there is always the home screen, the car, the fan, the seats, the temperature, the volume, and the other menu button. So you will always, at just one touch of a button, can I be able to do your controls? One touch. Can I? One touch. Can I set a scenario for one you? <laughs> let me set. Cure let me though. set the scene. Okay. We are on a motorway. Let's say we're on the M25. All right. All of a sudden, it's really foggy. It's fog everywhere. You need to turn on your fog lights. Turn on the fog. Foggy fog. Fog. How do you turn on your fog lights? But turn them on immediately. Turn Car. on those fog lights. Can you turn on your fog lights? Can you turn them on? Where are the fog lights? Somebody find them. There they are. Yeah. Your rear fog lights there. Did it. Would have been easier on the... But I did it, there, it. But I did it. I mean, I wasn't driving at the time. <laughs> so, but I did it. See, I'd say it's more complicated than it needs to be, but it's quite intuitive once you've tried it. Yeah, unless, I understand that. Because the thing is, is, is Ginny loves this car. Look, a bit. loves this car. And she understands where all the buttons are. And I think once you've lived with it for a while, you can understand where everything is and all the shortcuts work really nicely. I get that. I just want a knob or a button. That's all I'm asking for. I'm never going to be able to hear you say that word and keep a straight face. How's that head-up display working for you? <laughs> Don't have that. Uh, <laughs> ah, yes. Don't have that. That's, that is a little frustrating. And how do you feel about the plastic speckled look? It's like, it's, um, it's like the Italian terrazzo tile. I had to look that one up. But you know, like the work surface tiles, this bathroom tiles, floor tiles. Kitchen worktop. Kitchen worktop tiles. Yeah. Right. I quite like the speckly bits, the bits that I struggle with, but I appreciate them because they are all very sustainable materials, all that sort of stuff. It's underneath because it feels a little bit, a little bit cheap underneath. Yeah. And, and, do you want me to do it? And, there we are. <laughs> Cup holder. <laughs> there, there. And they can tuck right back in. When you don't need them. <laughs> Why can't they just permanently? Many, <laughs> many options. Um, what else have we got? Wireless charging, of course, down here. Heated seats, heated steering wheel as standard. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but it is coming soon as an over the air upgrade, so you won't have to do anything. It will just one day appear. Okay. But in the meantime, you click the app button, yeah. and then you go into Google Maps. And then you just plug yeah. in where you need and to And that go. looks lovely. I also yeah. want to give a shout out to the voice assist in yeah, here. Yeah, it's good. Which we have used in so many different cars, but it works really well. Like, she understands what you're saying in here, and she will reply to you. Like, if you were to say, OK, Google, turn on the front passenger heated seats. All right, turning on the seat heater for the front passenger. Thanks, babes. It's nice, that works. Cheers, nice. Google. Good yeah. girl. And hopefully, over time, 
over the air updates, she'll be able to do more for you. Like she will be able to turn on your rear fog lights if you can't do it with the faff. She should be able to open your windows eventually. I think in conclusion with this uh, one screen for all controls thing, is actually once you've used it literally once or twice, it is very easy to use. So it's like a small adaption and then actually it does all make perfect sense. Yeah, I need to turn off my heated seats now because my bum's really good. <laughs> So one area that I think that the Volvo scores big is on the driving front because it is surprisingly good. Although I am going to mention first of all that the view out of the rear window isn't the best. But other than that, um, the Volvo feels really nice. Now it is a bit smaller than the Kona on the road, but consequently it feels a bit nippier and I like that. This is the single motor version, 272 brake horsepower uh, which goes to the rears. Um, which I think makes the car feel a bit sportier, a bit nippier. Um, you've got division of labour. Wheels up front are steering the car, wheels at the back propelling the car. Uh, this does 0-62 miles per hour in 5.3 seconds. Very pokey. Not quite enough to make you feel seasick though, which I think is a good thing probably. But there is a faster dual motor. 422 brake horsepower version if you really need that in your life. So we're talking sub four second sprint to the shops. Did you hear that? That's the sensor beeping at me because it's looking at my eyes and saying, you're not looking at the road. You're looking at the camera. Um, so that's a good thing. It's also telling me I'm not staying in my lane. Now, this has been built on the parent company's Geely's SEA platform, the Sustainable Experience Architecture platform. Uh, so this is the kind of same platform that you would see on the smart hashtag one, which means it's agile. It feels good. Now you do feel some of the lumps and bumps on bad roads, but I actually think that might be to do more with the 20 inch wheels than the actual suspension, because other than that, the ride is actually really quite good. So let's put the one pedal drive to the test. So let's select that on. I've taken my foot off the accelerator, obviously. I have not put my foot on the brake yet. And we are gonna come to... Ta-da, a complete standstill, brilliant. Okay, fine. I don't have the speediness of the EX30 underneath my right big toe. But you know what? That's perfectly fine. <laughs> Look, this isn't exactly slow. This has 215 brake horsepower, will do 0 to 62 in 7.8 seconds, which is all right. That's not too bad. The thing is, I mean, the difference between this and the Volvo is this is front wheel drive. So yes, occasionally you do get a little scramble every now and again on the wheels when you're trying to put your foot down. Is it exciting? Um, no, it's not the kind of car that's going to knock your socks off. My socks remain firmly in my shoes, thank you very much. But I think that's perfectly okay for a car of this size, if I'm honest with you. Most of your family members aren't going to ask you to floor it, are they? Well, they shouldn't, anyway. I might have done that. If I was a passenger, I would probably ask you to floor it, but most of your passengers should not ask you to floor it in this kind of car. But it drives very nicely, I can't lie. It all drives really well. We've got decent regen braking because we have the wonderful flappy paddles going on behind the steering wheel. So, it's very similar in all Korean cars, really. You've got flappy paddles here. I can flap all the way that way. Now I have no regen braking whatsoever, so I am just coasting. And then I flap it all the way to the left. Boom, full eye pedal, one pedal driving. This will bring you down to a complete stop, which is just blooming wonderful if you are a fan of one pedal driving, which I am, uh, so is Ginny. I believe Nikki is as well, so that's always a good thing. It also has that sensor that Nikki has in her Volvo. It's got that as well to make sure that you're always keeping your eyes on the road and make sure that you're always paying attention. So that's always very good for safety. Here's a fun little fact for you. This Hyundai Kona has the same tight turning circle as a Mini Electric. You didn't expect that, did you? No, you didn't. I know, it shocked me as well when I found that out because you think of the size of a Mini Electric, then you think of the size of this, and it's got the same tight circle. 
find that very impressive. I do have a little moan that I would like to make about this car, and that is about the bing bongs. So I'm going to get a little bong here because the speed is about to change down to 30. So you'll hear it bing, boom. So that will is a good one because that's a nice reminder for you to turn down to 30 mile an hour, which I've done now. But it bing bongs a lot. Like the bing bongs end up becoming a little bit irritating. We're now down to 20, bing, bing, there it is, down to 20, which, I mean, you see it on the signs. And sometimes it just gets a bit annoying. Like then, that's more bing bongs. That was a lane thing. I don't even know what that was. I was not even speeding then, but it just did a little bing bong. It's very annoying, isn't it? So yeah, lane keep bing bongs. <laughs> Uh, your speed change bing bongs, all of the bing bongs. It'll also bing bong when it comes to the sensor, making sure that your eyes are having a little look. And sometimes I find these sensors go off, like say you're round a roundabout or you're just about to turn because let's say the steering wheel is upside down because you're about to make a turn. It will then start bing bonging at you because it thinks you're not looking, but it's purely because it can't see your eyes. So that makes it a little bit annoying driving position is very nice and also I quite like holding this steering wheel because it's got like a really thin bit down here because occasionally you know you like to shake things up a bit don't you it's quite a nice steering wheel to hold that and visibility in here is also pretty good oh before I get back out of the car this car has actual drive modes you know like most normal cars so you can switch from eco to normal to sport to snow even yeah it has that whereas the Volvo doesn't have any drive modes. It just has one pedal driving. So, got options here. Oh yeah. As far as charging goes, the Kona is, again, fine. There's decent 11 kilowatt AC charging as standard with 100 kilowatt DC. So that means it gets from 10 to 80% charge in 41 minutes at an average of 70 kilowatts. That adds around 168 miles, which is a bit slower than we'd like. And look, it doesn't support plug and charge and auto charge, which is also really useful if you can find compatible chargers. You're also looking at 10 and a half hours for a full charge on a 7.2 kilowatt home wall box. But there's a slightly bigger usable battery in the Kona, don't forget. So a full charge will get you 319 miles in ideal conditions, which is 24 miles more than the Volvo. And look, every little helps. Yes, it does. But you know what? I think the Volvo is even better because it's got the same 11 kilowatt AC charging as standard, but there's also the option of a 22 kilowatt unit if you think you're going to use it. But the big news is that 153 kilowatts of DC ability is available. Now that does make a difference. For example, if we were to stop at the same 175 kilowatt charger, the EX30 would charge from 10 to 80% in 28 minutes at an average 100 kilowatts. That is 13 minutes faster than the Hyundai, which is a pretty decent amount of time. It puts in slightly fewer miles, 295 miles in total. The battery is actually one usable kilowatt hour smaller, but you still get just under 160 miles. So only eight less. That slightly smaller battery also means that it charges from flat to full in 10 hours and 15 minutes. 15 minutes quicker. So, all in all, I think you'd agree, the Volvo comes out on top. Okay, it doesn't support plug and charge or auto charge yet, but it still just pips it. It's slicker and faster and not that far off in terms of range. Time is money, people. Time is money. Both have five-year warranties and eight-year battery guarantees. Both have apps and the usual digital agenda. Both have really good PCP options and strong residuals, with the Volvo just edging it. So I think the question is, do you have kids? And if you do, how much do you hate them? I've been wanting a therapy session for a while. <laughs> how long have you got, Nick? <laughs> we could be here for a few days. Um, that is a good question, and I think I know where you're going with that. Um, yes, having three children that are just growing fast, the space in the back of this Volvo is just not going to cut it, unfortunately. So if your priority is a decent sized family car with a decent sized boot, 
Unfortunately, I'm going to have to look over at the Kona. However, if you ask me which car I'd preferred pre-children, circa 2019, uh, then it would be a really easy answer for me. I do love the styling of the Volvo. I think it looks great. Inside, there's debate over whether it's a little bit plasticky, but I do like the one screen. Um, so ultimately, it's a decent range for the budget, 42K. Now here's what we need to acknowledge, right? The EX30 won our car of the year, but that version that won the car of the year is the entry level single motor version. And because it was so sustainable, all the materials inside, that was the 33,000 pound version. And that makes total sense. However, if you have just over 40,000 pounds to spend on a car, I think in terms of these two versions, you, you're going to have to go for the Kona because it just makes more sense. Yeah, Nick, I completely agree with you. If we were looking at the entry level cars, um, it would have to be the Volvo every time. But when we're talking about spending over £40,000, you need to get a lot of bang for your buck. And that's why the Kona wins. In true British form, we've started a video in the sun and now it's raining by the end of it. <laughs> Does that mean we go in? Yeah. Oh, hang on, we need to do the subscribe -y thing. Uh, uh, subscribe -y thing. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>